This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight from New York, New York. It's time now to do Bubs. That should be the name of the segment, actually. Hello, Bubs. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Good. We had our first, uh, I think, first snow in 40 years here. Yeah, he's in San Francisco. Uh, oh, you mean actual snow in San Francisco? Yes, on uh, around Twin Peaks and those places. Oh, okay, but not down where you live. No, no, that would be uh, that would be rare. Well, you know, I remember once as a kid, uh, it uh, it was snowing at the beach. Wow, that must have been cool. Yeah, that was cool, and, and, and of course, in California, kids never see snow unless they go up to the Sierra. All right. And uh, uh, I, so I, I, I was one of those kids, you know, although my parents did go to Reno. Uh, my father used to work up there and so on. And sometimes we'd go up during the winter and I saw, I knew it's, I saw snow, but that was like, wow, snow, you know. You never see snow in San Francisco. No. Yeah. So. And the weather's been, uh, I guess, cold, huh? Cold and wet, yes. Hmm. Delightful climate. Hey, but there's no there's no global warming. I'm sorry. I, I uh, it's ridiculous to even create that assumption. Maybe maybe it's global cooling. I don't know. It, well, that's what people say. Well, it's been cold. It's not global warming. No, but you, know, you don't understand that the term global warming applies to a bunch of problems that you can have, you know, and so on. So um, it it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to get cooler. But I mean, the fact that you get these. Except, it, California has been a uh, natural um, fire zone. I mean, it's just been a zone for everything. It's been you got the fires, <laughs> yes. right? Uh-huh. You've had floods, if I'm not mistaken. Fires, it's like it's like a biblical. Uh, the only statement. thing it's the only thing that hasn't hit you yet are locusts. You know. <laughs> I think Adam Carolla said the only thing in California that's not on fire is a homeless. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it must be terrible for the homeless if it's that cold, you know. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know how uh, how do they not die during this stuff? <laughs> yeah, well, it's because they, I guess they have antibodies from being homeless. I don't know. I have no idea, you know. But it's 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 terrible what's happening out there. I mean it, everything the fires the floods the the the, the uh, what do you call it the, the uh, drought the, oh, the, we have the, drought the, and floods in the same year drought floods landslides and the landslides are because the fires burnt the trees and the trees were holding back the the uh, ground so that yeah. you know when you don't have trees and then it rains you're going to get mudslides that's all you know that's what trees do you know, so it's it. I mean, a certain amount of trees every year have to burn, by as an act of nature. And many times, the Forest Service has to figure out whether to put out a fire, depending on whether it's a natural fire or a man-made fire. Because natural fires are good for the forest. How, Alex? Because what they do is they heat up the trees and they pop their seeds. And the seeds go everywhere, and then you get more trees. And you get that because of the fire. Have you heard that one? I have not heard that, no. Oh, okay. Then maybe it's not true. (laughs) (laughs) It could well be. I'm ignorant, so what do I know? What do you mean you're ignorant? You have more facts stuffed in that that amazing cranium of yours. (laughs) What's going to be interesting, you know, I have gotten to the point in my life where I forget stuff, you know, like, uh, 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 well, dates, forget that. I never was good at dates. 
but you know, I I forget uh, I forget the names of certain people. Like, you know, now it's always when we're watching television. Wasn't he the person that was in that thing? You know, we we can't remember. Yeah, I'm really that. bad on names. The, yeah, names. I just was am terrible with these days. So what I'm wondering is, you've got this brain that had, takes in certain kinds of knowledge, right? You're like this snow. You're like this. Uh, uh, what do you call it? A snowball rolling down a hill, and you can pl- constantly get this new stuff that yeah, makes meaningless knowledge. But, but it yeah. makes the snowball bigger and bigger and bigger until you've got this this breadth of knowledge that's uh, incredible. You know. Now I'm well, wondering. Maybe our brains are like uh, maybe they're like discs, and we get to. We have to defragment or whatever they call it. Well, I think that what happens is, I don't know if somebody said the reason why when you get older you can't remember things as well is because you've got too much stuff in your brain. In other words, That's you, what I was thinking, yeah. Yeah, you, you've gotten too much stuff uh, uh, accumulated in your knowledge that it starts, the brain starts sloughing it off, you know, so I don't know. But it, all I know is getting old ain't for sissies is... Betty Davis once said. But I'm wondering if when you get older, if all this stuff you remember, you won't remember anymore. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, as you get older, I think you tend to keep the really old stuff, but you tend to lose short-term memory. seems to go very bad. Let's show people what you do. I was born on December 18th, 1939. What day of the week was it? That was a Monday. See? Now, I, he may be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but, but well, we can ask Echo. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I will ask Echo. Echo, what day of the week was December eighteenth, nineteen thirty nine? December eighteenth, nineteen thirty nine was on a Monday. On a Monday. There you go. Okay. Yeah, and but it took her longer to come up with it than it took you. <laughs> no, she was pretty quick. Yeah. Um, let me. Okay, I'm just going to pick a date at random. This is going to be ridiculous. Um, what day of the week? Oh, was December eighteenth, eighteen twelve? Yeah, I couldn't go back that far. You can't go back that far. Why? No. There I isn't. Go back to. Uh, Actually, because the calendar is the same every 28 years, so when I look, when you told me 1939, I looked at 1967. Yeah, but how do you know that was the date on 1967? Because I was alive in 1967, I can remember things from then. Oh, I see. It has to be while you were alive that you somehow can go yeah. go back to that date. So I can basically go back to. Uh, by using the 28-year calendar, I can go back to about 1900, so. Okay, to, to 1900. So, like, uh, 1939, uh, it was okay. the third, your, your, your birthday would have been the same in 1911. I see, and at 1911, it would be exactly the a- same. Ask Echo, what was uh, December 18th, 1911? It should be a Monday. Uh, okay, Echo, what day was December 18th, 1911? December 18th, 1911. Monday. 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 Yeah. Yep. So every 28 years, it's the same. Every 28 years. So when, if I was born in 39, when would the next 28-year period come to a close? In other words, when will I repeat that year? Well, it repeated in 67. It will, it will, it'll generally, your birthday will also be on a Monday and a couple more years before that, but the calendar is always the same every 28 years. What do you mean, the, of, the same? I, I don't weird know. Weird pattern because the, uh, because the leap years and everything. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, because I... It's it's a marvelous thing you do there, and I didn't realize that every 28 years it's the same calendar, you know? Yeah. Uh, but it, but it, I could have had Monday birthdays other times as well. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay, well, anyway... Folks, he was right. Okay, so th- th- that's what you've got. Okay, that's what I've got. That's your. That's your. Your. But there are a few other things. I mean, you're good at just remembering all kinds of stuff. Historical. Can remember certain things. Yeah, like I, uh, when I go to bed at night, sometimes, like the other night, I sat down and started with 1970, 
and I could go up to like 1995 where I could remember at least an event from every month of from 1970 to 1995. What do you mean an event? In your life or just uh, well, an event? My life or something that happened. And yeah, it's just a very marginal thing, but I could remember at least something that happened each of those months. So. Okay, well, this is all, this is March. What happened in this month? Well, I, you know, I, I can remember, like, in, I started in 1970, March 12, 1970. It snowed in Cincinnati, where I lived. I remember that. So. Mm-hmm. So. And, that was a, and that was a Thursday. What, see? There we go. You're, uh, what's her, what was her name, uh, the woman that was on Taxi? Uh, Mary Lou Henner. Mary Lou Henner. I interviewed her, and she, you know, she's known as one of the world's great phenoms when it comes to this sort of thing. She can remember she's, what happened on every day of her life. Yeah, she's one of a dozen people in the world that can do that. She's, it's a certain type of memory, and she can, like you could say March 12, 1970, she could tell you what she had for lunch. Yeah, it's amazing. That, that, that's and she's a, like, uh, she is amazing, yeah. But what will happen when she reaches my age? Will she start losing it is what I'm wondering. That's a good question, yeah. She, is, uh, she was born in 52, I know that. So. Yeah. So. In fact, uh, she was on an interview with Bob Costas once, and mm-hmm. he said, where were you on the day that we landed on the moon? And she just doubled over laughing hysterically because that was the night she lost her virginity. <laughs> <laughs> Did she say that? Yeah, yeah, and she would have been so born. So she would have been seventeen then. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow! Wow! Oh, amazing! Amazing! Well, so so I mean, you you are really rather prodigious with this. I mean, you're not as good as Mary Lou Henner. No, not even close. No. But you're you know you, you're amazing. I mean, a lot of times I will talk about you know our shows in San Francisco. And I will say, oh, the day we had oh, Jay Leno on or something. And you will remember the day. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. It's hard to remember. There's so many days we did in the radio show. that Those tend to run together. But uh, yeah. I do remember when you had Camille Pallion. That was October of 92. Didn't I have to do her in another studio? She freaked out when she saw the audience. So she had to go to the private studio with her to interview her. Right. Yeah. I yeah, remember. She just saw the, I remember she came in and saw the, all the people sitting there, and she just wigged out. I remember, though, on the whole, I got along with her. You did, yeah. And she's a very difficult person. She is. She's kind of a feminist, but she's kind of a free thinker. Has had, uh, she had some... I liked her. I liked her a lot, too. As I remember I liked her. I don't know. She was kind of controversial. I don't know if she's still, if she's still alive. I don't even know. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Echo, is Camille Paglia still alive? From idlebirthdays.net. As per our current database, Camille is still alive. As per Wikipedia, last update, May 10th, 2020. Okay, she's still alive. If you'd like another answer, just say next. Forget it. Echo, forget it. So she is alive, okay. Yeah, she is alive. Right, so you know. Sadly, not alive is uh, we lost Raquel Welch. Ah, uh, yes, yes. The, uh, I don't know that she was one of my. She wasn't. I don't think she was in my spank bank. Really? Because uh, when I was a uh, when I saw her as a teenager, I, I thought my head was going to pop off. Well, I mean, she had an incredible body. Do you know you you're going to find this impossible to believe, but it's absolutely true. She never did a nude scene. Um, really? Yeah, wow. yeah. She was against doing nude scenes. I, I think because that's what everybody expected out of her, mm-hmm. and so she just never did it. She never had a reason to do it. She she get hired for other stuff, you know. She but she didn't want it. And would never do a nude scene. Um, and uh, how old was she when she died? Eighty two or something? Eighty two. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I think still not looking terrible. No, no. You know. But that's what face work will do for you. Thank you very much, folks. I'll be here all week. <laughs> well, who's the old, who's an oldest the oldest woman that still look hot? 
my wife. <laughs> Good, correct answer, yeah. That's the only answer I can come up with and not get uh, hit in the head, you know. So. <laughs> no, uh, what is the hottest, oldest woman? Um, you know something? At, even at her age of, I think, 92, if I'm not mistaken, 92, 93, uh, Rita Moreno is still kind of hot. There's a there's a smoldering something there, you know. Uh, wow. Uh, do you have a woman that you could name that was old that's sexy? Uh, there's that English actress who's still around who's got to be in her late seventies. That uh, I can't remember her name. As you know, we can't remember names. It, well, what what kind what picture did she do? Do you remember? Uh, she was in. She was in the sequel to 2001, A Space Odyssey. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember. She's English. She's... There was another woman who looked hot that was... Uh, she was in Playboy in her 50s. She was a wife of uh, Jake LaMotta, Vicky LaMotta. Vicky LaMotta, yeah. Vicky LaMotta. Vicky LaMotta was, kind of, was very hot, actually. Yeah, she was in Playboy in her like, mid-50s, I think. Yeah, now we're getting to people that nobody who's listening to us remembers, okay? So. Well, Jake LaMotta, who was uh, based on the uh, Raging Bull. Well, you said that uh, the woman was in uh, the sequel to 2001, which was 2010, okay? See, that's where I know stuff, okay? <laughs> yeah, here. Uh, two, 2010, 2001, oh, there we go. Go, come on, 2004 or oh, 2010, the year we make contact. Terrible movie, by the way. Helen Mirren. That's it. Yes. Oh yeah. Well, listen, even as an old lady, she she, I saw her on the Colbert show or something, an interview with Colbert. She came out. She put a, a lip lock on him like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> She's supposedly still a horny old broad. You know, she's active, <laughs> and she has over the years. Well, I mean, now she's getting very wrinkly, but she still exudes a certain like. Well, uh, so I'm old, you know. Screw me. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's like very strange, very strange. But she's really good. Yeah, Helen Mirren. I didn't know she was in that picture. Oh well. You don't know. Yeah, that. I saw that a few years ago. Yeah, and she popped up, and I thought, wow. I was that was, yeah, it was a bad movie. Well, you don't know that Helen Mirren's been in a lot of things because she does everything. You know, she's a working actress. She's in Britain. When uh, when an actor acts, they don't go and say, "Well, I want to see the script first and see if it suits." They just say, "How much?" And no matter what it costs, they'll you know they'll show up because it's a job and they're working. Their job is to be an actor. Uh, that's how you wound up having John Gielgud, one of the all-time, I think it was John Gielgud, one, all the, one, one of the all-time great Shakespearean actors and British actors in Caligula. Or Malcolm McDowell was in that picture because they're British actors. How much are you going to pay me? You're going to pay me that much? Okay, and where do I show up? <laughs> So they're desperate for money. No, they're not desperate for money. What they do is or they, they just want to work. Well, they no, they consider it a profession, and it's like you're a plumber, right? And okay. somebody says, "Come fix my pipes." You don't say, uh, "Well, can you send me? Uh, can you send me your resume and let me see if you live up to the qualities I need for to do my plumbing?" No, you'd show up and you, yeah, okay. Here's my here's what I charge. Are you gonna pay me? Okay, I'll, I'll be there. That's basically what British actors are doing. They consider it to be a profession, you know, and uh, it, you show up. So it, it's it's pretty uh, pretty cool that they're that way. But so Helen Mirren shows up in a lot of stuff that you wouldn't expect her to show up. There, there was a comedy show on on. Uh, let's see here, Where, what what was it on? Was it on FX or I can't remember what. It, but it was called uh, it was called Documentary Now. And it was parodies of various well-known documentaries. And it went for about four seasons, and she was the host of it. Hello, I'm Helen Mirren. Welcome to, and then she said, welcome to the 50th year of you know, uh, 
documentary now, and it's it's on uh, it's on Netflix. In case well, you can't get Netflix, but no. When I talk about things like Netflix, I may as well be talking about you know life on <laughs> Mars, um, because Bubs doesn't own any technology. You, no. Do you have a computer? But I mean, you have a computer? I have heard Netflix isn't doing well. That's what I've heard. They're doing okay. You know, I mean, all these things are having problems now because they invested way too much money into into programming and things like that, and they should have been a little more careful. But uh, uh, do you do you have a computer? No. I have a computer, yeah. You do? Oh, yes. Yeah. Of course. Because does this sound sound familiar to you? <laughs> 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 he has dial-up. Dial up. How many people do you say still have dial-up in San Francisco? They had 50,000. 50,000, and by the way, that's a, a sufficient number, but you have to realize they're all homeless. So uh, <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> so uh, do they ever come to you and knock on your door and go, aren't you tired of having dial-up? No, but uh, I've... Uh, the, apparently our building is hard it needs to be rewired or something so nobody wanted to touch it That's, AT&T said yeah we don't want to do it so. well it, it doesn't really need to be rewired you have cable don't you uh, I think there is like a port in the wall that's probably it so. you, but is there cable in your building how about your other your neighbors do they have cable I've never asked them no because it's a bunch of <laughs> the reason he never asked. Pe- the reason he never asked is he really there's doesn't care. There's twelve units in the building. I know two people that live here, and there's the new people come and go all the time. So, well, next time you talk to one of them, why don't you ask me? Do you have cable? Because I bet you there's okay. cable in that building. I don't think. Okay, the, I'll find out. You know, and if you have cable in that building, then you can get uh, you can get uh, the internet through the cable. I would like to get high speed internet. Yeah. Yeah, you could get it through the cable. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. You know, but I mean, come on. You know, a, a apartment building in San Francisco that isn't wired for internet or cable? Come on. Mm-hmm. I think you just don't want to ask. Uh, I don't want to deal with uh, Xfinity or those people, no. <laughs> oh, why? I did, I, you just, I don't know. Like you, they always have hidden charges. They got to send somebody out there tear your apartment up i talked to somebody a couple years ago they had they had internet service but they sent it i think it was totally wireless you had to if your building was in an area of the city where there was other buildings they they had to have a direct shot at your place well actually actually if uh there are 4g systems where you can now get onto the internet using 4g which is you know Pretty much in every city now, you know. So you know, but there are a lot of things you could do. But quite frankly, I don't want to have to put you through them because you'll go crazy. You I'll know? go crazy. Yeah. You'll go crazy. I mean, um, it's it, it it you know. For instance, we right now we could be doing this seeing you physically, right? That would be a minus. Yes. <laughs> that would be a minus, right? <laughs> Um, because you really don't want to be seen, do you? No. I do these things. That's, with, why, that's why I liked, uh, I loved radio. That was so much fun. Michael Snyder. I do, so I, you could I, go I, up with mustard yeah. on your shirt. And yeah, well, I, I used to do, uh, uh, you know, Michael Snyder. I do every couple of weeks doing movie reviews here. And uh, he doesn't want to use the video, Right. I mean, he can do it. We could then do a video thing, but he doesn't want to do it. And uh, he even, when I call him using a, a Zoom, he turns his camera off. He doesn't even want me to see him. Okay. You know, privately. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Right. You know, I mean, yeah, we're all getting older, but come on. Hey, listen, if I'm brave enough to show myself, right? <laughs> I mean, what's the problem with looking at Larry Bubbles Brown? Believe me, his looks are not going to disappoint you. You know, where sometimes you go, boy, that voice coming out of that guy? I never, you know, I used to do that with radio people. I used to go, wow, I can't believe a voice comes out of that guy. 
and uh, uh, in the case of bubbles, there's no disappointment at all. No disappointment. Anyway, hey, I listen. have a theory about voices that uh, when you hear somebody's voice, for some reason you get a you visualize what they look like. Yeah. And it must be because you've heard a similar voice before, and right. you're pegging it to that, right? Right. Exactly. Hey, listen, we have uh, we have run out of time here. Gosh. Time's blown by. It's blown by, and we've had a lot of fun with Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Let's talk next week. Will do. Bye-bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. And uh, Larry Bubbles Brown, our old friend Larry, 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 who uh, I wonder if I forgot to, I think I forgot to ask him. Is he getting his hernia operation? Because he, this, uh, you know something? It's, it, this is what old people talk about. If you're young and you're listening to this program, this is what old people talk about. Hey, I'm getting my hernia operated on. Oh, I got, uh, I got a little blood test. I think I might have cancer, touch of the cancer. That was the big, best excuse I ever got out of anybody for why they wouldn't show up for my program. I was supposed to have little Richard on here in New York City, okay? and um, uh, here in New York City, and um, he didn't show up. Uh, so I call, we called after the show, and he said, I couldn't make it, I had a touch of the cancer. And to this day, I wonder what a touch of the cancer is. I guess what I had with, the, with my prostate turned out to be a touch of the cancer. I don't know, anyway. So, uh, it's Friday night already. I didn't get any sleep last night. You know why? I was up till 4.30 in the morning. Well, what happened is, when I get off the air here, I have to do several things technologically, and I suddenly noticed that my, uh, my email wasn't coming through. It, 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 not, nothing for uh, gabnet.net, right? Uh, and uh, none of that email was coming through, and I couldn't figure out why. And I was trying to figure it out, and I was changing things. doing, And, and finally, by... Three o'clock in the morning, I still hadn't solved the problem, so I decided I better go to bed. So I get into the uh, I get into a bed and I just lie there, and my, my brain is buzzing. Now, if I move this and I move that and I do this and I do that, and then I get up and I come back here and try something. By the time I finally got to sleep, it was like four thirty, quarter of five, and I had to get up uh, like about eleven thirty because I had to do a thing with Snyder, and I didn't I got. No sleep. I'm here with. I'm here sleepless in in uh, in uh, New York. So, anyway, that that was what happened to us. So, anyway. Mm. By the way, last night we had a Zoom bomber who got through. He got through because he was very. He was very. I got to hand it to him. He was. If you're listening, I, I, good 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 going. What he did is we have a guy who was calling this new caller to this problem named Wayne. And it said Wayne, and I went, well, i got to let this guy on because I like Wayne, and uh, I want to encourage him to call more often. And I go to Wayne, and sure enough, there's Wayne, but he's not talking. He's not saying anything. I say, hello, Wayne, and he's not move, saying anything. And then all of a sudden, the guy Zoom bombs us with porn. All right, so I finally hit the button. I get, I get him off the screen because I put myself up, which I know doesn't look as good as the porn. And uh, we <laughs> we we just had a little uh, I, I you know a little uh, little stuff get on the air last night. Every time this has happened, I get record numbers. The next day, I guess people say, "Hey, did you see what went on last night? Did you see the porn?" I mean, it was like you know four seconds worth. But so to that guy, congratulations. Okay, we really appreciate it. Anyway, let me admit our citizen panel that that which we have at this moment, which isn't uh, isn't a hell of a lot. Let's see, we got Josh Whedon there, and uh, we got the uh, lovely and attractive uh, um, uh, Alan, and we have the real Wayne. Now you notice what I've done. He he had me uh, write him and say, "Give me a name to use so that you'll know it's really me." So that's I the name it. we've used. Zoom Bomber. So I gave him the name Zoom Bomber. We'll use that for a little bit until people start calling. Well, they'll probably start writing Zoom Bomber now. But, you know. 
Maybe we'll change it next week or something. But you, you might even see Phil tonight, the real Phil. Yeah, I know, because uh, there's a little <laughs> something. Is it, no, no, don't say what it is. Were you He's gonna blow? Were you gonna blow the, the 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 surprise? I didn't know there was a surprise. Oh, well, He's pregnant. He's pregnant. No, why? 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 Why would he call on Friday night? Um, I don't know why. He huh. wants to irritate us. Y yes. He, yeah. There you go. Thank he you. Wants to make our life miserable. Right. Anyway. So, hello, Josh. How are you doing this week? Good. How are you? Fine. Fine. I mean, except for the fact that I didn't get any sleep last night. You know, it's terrible when you can't when you just lie there, and you don't go to sleep. It's yes, just it? anguishing. What? Alexa, turn off office light. I said, uh, yes, it is. Yeah. I have experience with that. You have experience with that? Bad experience with it? Because usually I'm pretty good at getting to sleep, you know. Uh, Yeah, I have experience with that, yeah. Yeah. Well, do you, do you ever take a pill or something to put you to sleep? Uh, I have tried things in the past that did not work. Yeah, well, what's pretty good for that is Xanax, oddly enough. Uh, yeah. Relax, relaxes your mind. Yeah, it does. I mean, it always puts me to sleep, but I don't take it now because I take this pregabalin, and the two together would make me just completely lupefied. Oh, look who's there. Look who's joined us tonight. Oh. Yeah, I've been uh, laying down all day. Why? And my drugs are more expensive than your drugs. What is that? Paxlovid. Well, it didn't cost me anything. Yeah, but you know that it costs the government $530 for a five-day uh, prescription? Can you get it for free? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, somebody's got to pay. Yeah, but like believe you. me, the government isn't paying $530. Well, that's what I was told, $530. And well, all you Democrats are paying for it. <laughs> oh, you, God, so you have Paxlovid. All right, it's good seeing you, Phil. Which, good night. Me, which, means, which means that everybody, wait a minute, do I have my face mask here? No, I don't. Yeah, yeah, put on a mask. Everybody should put on their face mask because you have COVID. COVID. Yeah, I thought I escaped uh, the, the COVID plague. I thought that the Chinese uh, virus would never get me. I forgot to wear my helmet for protection. Yeah. <laughs> it's an odds game, Phil. You don't wear a mask. So do you feel sick? You feel ill? No, nah, I, I feel like I've got a very mild cold, mm -hmm. but I'm a little tired. Yeah. Well, you'll uh, find the Paxlovid. If you, it, when did you take your test? When did you? Uh, oh, I took the test this morning, mm -hmm. uh, and I took the Paxlovid. Uh, let's see, it was four my time, and now it's eight, so about four hours ago. Hmm. So, yeah, well, if you take it, the test tomorrow, it'll yeah. probably go away, you know. That'd it says, good. Tony entered the waiting room. I'm going to assume this is actually Tony, but I'm going to keep my finger on the camera. Yeah, I, I was thinking about putting a name in that only you and I would know who it yeah. was. Yeah. Oh, there is Tony. That actually is Tony. Hello, Tony. It could be a video of Tony from last night. <laughs> <laughs> if I get COVID, Alex, 3,000 miles away from this guy again, I'll kill you. <laughs> yeah. You've already had COVID, Tony. I, I had it without the vaccine. Yeah. But, so but, but, but you, you know, you'll be, you'll be okay. Phil will be okay. He's not going to. No, yeah. No, he's not going to, he's not going to do anything. Or... He's not going to do anything positive like die on us. <laughs> I had a call in Germany. So yeah. I was waiting for him to get on you, Alex. I fell. Yeah. Imagine if he didn't take a turn for the horse car. I would, Alex, would you give a good eulogy? Oh, God. Him? I think there's coffee in him again. Hey, he would there go is, to Alex. Chat. <laughs> he, Alex would go to chat. He knows me like a book. It's so true. I hate to see you on cocaine <laughs> for crying out loud. Yeah, really. That would. I mean, hey, Alex. Hey, ever since you said the coffee, it does jack me up. Hey, can Tony, you go to chat? Shut GBT? the fuck up, okay? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Can you go Thanks. to Chat GBT Thanks. and get a eulogy for me? No. 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 Okay. No. That doesn't do eulogies. Well, no, wouldn't know that? who you are. Oh, that's true. Yeah. See, he I mean, was such a nice. There's man. enough stuff out there for me to be able to have it right about me. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, did you get the, uh, the the drug you got? It's in suppository <clears throat> form. You're not supposed to swallow them, Phil. Phil? Uh, you're the only one that likes to swallow stuff around here. <laughs> uh, I, I take oh, a few pills. Well, it's a fun Friday night, right, All Josh? Right. I'm going to be up to three. <laughs> sure. I'm watching it. Anyway, Josh, what, what 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 is there anything in the news that you would like to talk about at all? Um, well, let's see. Um, I really don't care about that murder trial thing. I was a little uh, disbelief that that was the top story on the news this yeah. morning on my yes. way into work. Yes. I, I can't believe that. Came last not, night. I mean, it came, when it came I mean, through it, last night, too. It's not like a. It wasn't like a murder trial for some Klansmen who lynched a black man in 1960. I mean, it was a guy. Hey, it was a there family. Was, there, man. there was a murder. There is one good I, thing I, I, about I it. There's one good thing about it is they came to a nice, quick verdict, and, and now it's gone. Thank God. Yeah. 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 So Well, they went back into the yeah. jury room to take a leak and then came back. Yeah, I mean, that's basically. Yeah. Well, I, I followed none of that. I have no idea. Well, here's what. Marjorie watched a yeah. lot of it. A lot of it, okay? Which I'm ashamed to admit that I'm even married to her when I talk about yeah. that. Uh, but, I mean, she watched it, and I kept telling her, this is not important news. You know, no, this is a this is a uh, dra uh, a looky loo drama that's perfect yeah. for uh, MSNBC and Fox and right. CNN to run a lot of because they don't have to pay anybody. Tonight. They don't have to. Yeah, yeah. They don't, have to, they don't so, have to pay anybody to do it. And uh, mm. but when you get down to it, Marjorie says, well, you know, it was an important trial. And I said, the only thing that made it important is they covered it. It wasn't. Important. Otherwise, it right. wasn't. It was. I mean, there, were, there was a murder here in New York last week of a ch young child and his mother. Yeah. Now, do you think there's going to be a coverage of that trial on MSNBC? No. No. So, I mean, for the folks who were interested, um, you know, like a core TV or on YouTube or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, in the sense of freedom it's perfectly fine if people are really into that it's no different than kevin and i might watch a ball game or something you know that that's fine i just i don't know why it was the top story at 7 a.m east coast time for cnn you know well, but that's, those are the channels it's for <laughs> i mean you know that's a little odd but i think the biggest i don't know maybe the largest news of the week might have been uh you know the court dug into the challenge to the student loan forgiveness plan and program this week, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I have not had time to uh, uh, go back and listen to the oral argument. I, I do like to hear those. Maybe I'll play that in the morning when I'm uh, running my morning yeah, well, here's errands and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, why? But, is, why is it, you know, that CNN and those people don't run that? That I guess they don't run it because it's just audio only. Right. But why why don't they run that? That's important stuff. Well, it, that is important stuff. I mean, you know, even though it's audio only, you know, C-SPAN will, they'll air it uh, that night. Um, they might do it earlier now because it used to be when they had an oral argument mm -hmm. that they didn't release the tape of the oral argument until later in the day. And mm -hmm. then for most, for your important cases or a lot of them, C-SPAN would play it that night on their, you know, America in the courts. You know, they would just put it up on the screen, the, you know, face of whoever was talking and things like that, or maybe a little description of what's going on, and they, they would play it. Um, but now, I think it started last year uh, when they went to that Zoom temporarily, and now that they're back, they let it keep going. They are actually letting you stream it now, I believe, live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the mornings uh, no, until they have yeah. to go to the, the, the house and stuff. Then they got yeah, their, no, their... no more No more delay. And if you can't get it on C-SPAN, I think you can get the live feed on C-SPAN. Wait, wait a minute. Are you telling me that C-SPAN didn't the cover court? that murder trial? Wow. No, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I thought that was, you know, uh, you know, bad thing. You know, Trump did it or something, maybe. So they, they shied off of that. But, you know... That was probably the, I don't know, I don't know if it was the biggest news, but it, I mean, it was one of the most 
important things, that has the potential, you know, to affect a lot of people, you know, one way well, or the other. Well, but far be it for the for for MSNBC to cover that, right? You know, I well, mean, the that, other that, the other thing is the uh, transportation bill that they're starting to bring back because of the train wreck. They're going to start yeah. bringing back all that stuff that they were arguing about a couple years ago, and they're bringing that back. Do you mean the stuff that Trump? Uh, yeah, pretty much the, yeah. Uh, the fines, the the rules that they were going to, you know, the hazardous materials rules that they were going to enforce, uh, mm. the reporting, that, you know, when a hazardous train comes through your place, the weight rules, all that stuff. That's supposedly a bipartisan bill that's I'll tell you, going it's a very uh, People don't realize this, and I, I think I should make it known, that there's a terrible side effect of a train wreck like that, is that Aaron Brockovich comes to your town. <laughs> yeah. Uh, everybody yeah, shows up. Around. Everybody shows up to uh, take advantage of the mm -hmm. situation, and they keep saying, "Like, why isn't uh, why isn't Biden here?" Well, what the hell could Biden do there? They don't do anything but you know? pictures. You know. Yeah. They they it's, want it's to, not, They want to make really, Biden uh, look bad because he didn't show up, and when Buttigieg does show up, they 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 complain about the way he acted when he was there. And the fact is, all these people don't really need to go there. They can look mm -hmm. at the situation and then fight mm -hmm. to do whatever they got to do to solve the problem back where mm -hmm. they are. The president well, is I mean, it's, for anything else. It's, you know, it's, it's obviously a bit of a government problem now, but I mean, I don't, it's not a government, you know, blame here. I mean, I don't, even, I don't blame the Trump administration for the, I mean, the accident was caused yeah, but it was caused. I, it was caused as one, a result, though, know. of of legislation that, uh, or of a. I think it was actually a. Uh, what do you call? What do you call those laws where you just sign them in uh, into being? Executive order. Executive order. It was an executive order allowing the uh, the railroads not to have mm -hmm. to look out for this sort of thing or take well, care of it. And, right. and, it, it, and because mean, he signed that, if he had, if he, had, he had not, if he had like not done that executive order, what you saw happen out there might not have happened. Well, I don't know. I saw a lot of information that basically said that that that's not true. Um, and I I read it in you know places that. Well, damn it! I want to believe it. Well, okay. right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I read it in some places that normally would jump at the chance to to you know grill him over that. Yeah, I mean the underlying cause was not really, I don't think, a particular act or non-act by Trump no. or Biden. The underlying cause is negligence by, you know, large companies that don't always do what they should do. Well, my my question, my, uh, my no. question would it be would, what it was a mechanical incident mm -hmm. that caused it. Yes, right. but that was from lack of maintenance and lack of in mm -hmm. infrastructure upkeep. Right. Well, there, there, uh, there are um, there are uh, sensors on the track. Mm -hmm. I think still they're out there that can see mm -hmm. if these things are heating up. Mm -hmm. Then apparently it either didn't work or somebody was asleep at the switch, so to well, speak. Well, what they were saying was that it, 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 it did work, but there weren't enough of them to catch it uh, and give enough warning. Uh, for, now, is that the fault? Is know. that the fault of the railroad? Oh, I th I think so. I mean, okay. it's their stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the government could force them to do more than they normally do, which is what government usually has to do. If you leave it up to the rail companies alone, or any company in that in that realm, do the minimum. They're always going to be willing to take the gamble. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know. Because they're rich enough to uh, to not lose money on the one time they lose the gamble. I mean, it would be – it's like billionaires making large bets in Las Vegas or whatever. If they make more money, they do. And if they don't, well, you know, it hurts them. Well, that's but not really, you know. That's the point behind the legislation is a lot right. of that – a lot of those things that were brought up yeah. were brought up by the unions and the unions that the guys out there doing these things and doing this maintenance were saying that the shit was getting left behind mm -hmm. and not being done. And they were yes. the ones bringing up all this stuff. That I love, you know, I love the railroad. They say that they're, they're out there in uh, Palestine, uh, or is it East Palestine, I think, 
uh, they, they're out there um, uh, giving people millions of dollars to get their lives together. And I'm thinking, huh, how many people live there? Million, millions of dollars? Uh, you know, that ain't going to solve the problem. They're okay. out there to shut them up. Yeah. Oh, well, they have to, if they yeah. take the, any yeah. of the money from these thousand dollar outlays, well, they I have to, they I have to sign, you know. they have to sign a piece of paper saying they won't sue. Sure they do. They right. Do. Yeah. I don't think they're, you know, they're doing the right thing for sure. Um, but you know, here's, here's the problem with, you know, the, the politics of it, for example, is if you don't think they're doing the right thing and you think that, uh, Biden should do something about it or make them. I, I guess I don't have much of a difference with that, but the people that are criticizing him right now for not doing that, conservatives or Republicans or constitutionalists or whatever, will be the first one to tell you that government shouldn't have a hand in that, no. that he shouldn't have that power, you know? So that's just the politics of it, you know, which is why I don't listen to someone criticizing him, you know, uh, uh, I don't even really know who has been, but if a Marco Rubio or a Ted Cruz or whatever. Well, no, they, they've been out there. It's, it's they've, hypocritical they've, of them to they've do been, it. You know? They've been on TV saying, hey, where's the president? Right. He hasn't come out here. And I always, you know, it always bothered me why the president shows up even where there's been a hurricane or something. Isn't he mm -hmm. better off being in Washington, signing bills and getting mm -hmm. money appropriated to save those people than taking an yeah. airplane flight out there just so everybody yeah. can go, oh, the president came to see us, you know? Yeah, oh, I've oh, never oh. been a, a huge fan of it. I mean, uh, I guess I'm indifferent to it either way, if it makes people feel better or whatever, but it probably doesn't. I mean, it's a bit of a stunt. It's done by them all. They, but, didn't, they didn't ask Lincoln to do this, but then again, it would have taken him about a year to get to wherever he had to go yeah. to, to to look at the yeah. disaster. So well, I don't I don't have a problem that he that he didn't visit. Um, yeah. You know, in all honesty, the person that you do want to visit is, you know, Buttigieg or whatever. The, the, that's the person who actually runs an organization that has some power. Mm-hmm. To, but they said, know, why didn't you? The they said, why didn't, why didn't I, you? I think maybe the EPA so, director is they, there. I don't you know. know. They, they said, why didn't you get here sooner to Buttigieg? And my, my answer would be, he didn't get out there faster because he was busy taking care of the problem back in his offices where he could, right. um, you know, he has all his experts and so on and he can solve the problem. Well, yeah. that's, that's he what said he himself. He do. said that himself. He said he was not going to get in the way of the emergency personnel because when he goes out there, they got to close the, mm -hmm. close the you know streets down for this and yeah. uh, you know all you know it just disrupts the the emergency process. Well, That's I've talked he... I've talked many times about when we had the earthquake in San Francisco and how uh, 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 Dan Quayle came out to visit and completely uh, obstructed everything in the neighborhood. You know, yeah. uh, they, and they yeah. you know, they, they had the cops yeah. following him and taking care of him, and he, uh, you know, it was just a looky. It was a a show. It was just a show, yeah. and and we didn't need that kind of show. We just needed immediate help, right? Which we, I mean, at the end of the day, for me, mm -hmm. I'm just saying that you know, a train derailed, very bad accidents, or accident, a lot of negligence on the part of the company, you know, taking care of it, but. For me, at the end of the day, yeah. I'm not going to blame Trump, and I'm not going to blame Biden. I, I mean, hate, a train yeah. derailed. We don't need to blame the president of the United States or the former president of the United States as, you know, like they were some direct right. causation to this. I mean, I'm not saying one of them or the other or both mm -hmm. maybe couldn't have done a little more or should have this or should have that. But, I mean, you know, pretty soon every time there's a fender bender on the freeway right. in fucking los angeles we're gonna have to hold you know one of our former presidents account i mean that it yeah. just it's just getting a little bit you know phil any thoughts on this i'm afraid to ask well it's a tragedy and rather than look to place blame i'd look to see what can be done to fix it and yeah. you know before you throw me off the only thing i thought about the murtaugh deal before i is throw you went, off yeah, they, they went a, a little too hard on the guy. After all, he's a widower, and he just lost his son. Yeah, but he may have killed them. That's the... That's the I, I understand, yeah. but... Well, here's, here's what I... Okay, let me, let me throw this out. Now, this sounds strange, and yeah. bear with me here. But I wonder what good there is in even throwing a guy like Murtaugh in jail for the rest of his life. 
I mean, That's right. execute them. No, what I'm <laughs> no, what I'm saying here <laughs> is, yeah. uh, it's it's not like this guy's going to go back home and kill a whole bunch of people. All right, I mean, having him have to maybe stay at home for the rest of his life might be, be a better answer. Wouldn't clog up the prisons. Um, I just don't know why we are so punitive in our in our in our laws uh, we have a tendency to be very punitive when we find somebody and find them guilty of something and then we throw that, the book at them that's what i'm doing with the restorative justice uh council uh with the da mm -hmm. uh is uh, our our issues are not punitive what we look to do is restore the harm to the neighborhood and restore uh, the harm to the neighborhood yeah it might have been a uh, theft uh, what, do you mean? what do you mean restore the harm <laughs> well these are the words that they use in in restorative justice <laughs> they say restore the harm yeah you see cool for instance <laughs> how do you, if somebody, you restore the harm you bring yeah, back the criminals to, to beat up on everybody it, well the, these are nonviolent things these are just misdemeanors first-time offenders and you know maybe they did some graffiti or uh, you mean you mean uh, re restore restore what the harm did yeah to, yeah yeah and uh, i think it's a bad and, term to say restore harm. and then give them an opportunity to move on without a criminal record mm. uh i think it is a good thing it gives people a second chance mm. and maybe the justice department hasn't worked with punitive justice maybe uh using this restorative uh approach you know, you got nothing to lose. Well, you see, what's, what, what, know that what we got doesn't work. What they said that was punitive, okay, yeah. uh, was that we're giving him two life sentences, not even co co coexisting with each other, so that, you concurrent. know, it, it, concurrent, uh, but two life sentences. So if he eventually dies and then he comes back to life or something, we can <laughs> throw him back in jail again. How long, <laughs> how long is a life sentence? Well, is it 40 years? In the case of... But I think if it's without possibility of parole, that's yeah. it. That's well, sometimes a, a life sentence might be, I think, 40 years. Uh, so if you have two life sentences, that's 80. Yeah, uh, but he, he, he was given two life sentences without possibility of parole. Okay. Uh -huh. But, I mean, uh, uh, in, uh, even in other countries, they have far lighter sentences for things. You know, they yeah. say, hey... You know, if a, if we arrest a kid when he's 18 and he does something horrible, even murders somebody, and then we tell him he's got to spend the rest of his life in prison, well, that's kind of ridiculous because by the time he's 40, he's probably a whole different person. You well, if, if you serve your entire sentence uh, without the possibility of parole, that doesn't mean at the end of the sentence you can't be uh, let out because well, you what, serve what, what, your sentence. What about life don't you understand here, Phil? Uh, they say, I understand that they say a life with that, sentence yeah, the, has, they, a, has a time stamp on it uh, and uh, that it might be 25 years or 40 years, but it has, it has an end date uh, as to when he served his time without possibility of parole. So could he then, after four, uh, let's say it's one sentence uh, served concurrently for 40 years, at the end of 40 years, can this guy just walk Look, out? I, what's ridiculous is they didn't even have to give him a life sentence. That was to say, see, we got you. Because how old is this guy now? About 60, I think. Or, in yeah. his 60s? Anybody know? I don't know. I think about 60. Yes, about 60. How many more years has he got left? You know, he could have another five years. He could have another 15 years. But he's never going to have to do more than about so that that's a death sentence not a life sentence you could put it that way yeah right. yeah i mean i'm i just went what sir what you know uh, people i know people are going to find this ridiculous but what's being served you know mm -hmm. they put they pointed something out tonight on uh, mm -hmm. uh, in a discussion i saw i can't remember where and it was an interesting thing that this person said they said the problem was is that the reason he got found guilty was because the prosecution wasn't going for the death penalty. If the prosecution was going to the death penalty, they said the jurors would be much more careful about their deliberation. Really think so? But I did. That's what they said, and it makes sense. You know, that yeah. they wouldn't just offhand say he's guilty. They'd really mull it over because the end product is going to be an execution if they're, if they're wrong, you know? 
So right. back to talking about the train. What? Uh, what do you want to have a train? No, no, Alex. <laughs> you want to talk about the murder, and that's all we've been talking about. Well, I, I here's my, can I say? I'm oh, sorry. There was a point that I wanted to make. That's all. Okay, uh, 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 Tony. Maybe yeah, I was gonna. If, if, to if anybody this can up. sidetrack this discussion, it'll be Tony. Go ahead. No, Tony. actually, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Add to this discussion, I hope, actually. I was watching some true crime with my sister. So they were showing like different big cases over time. So we're watching the Manson case and stuff like that. And here's a question though. And I even told this to my sister. She says, What did you do? What did you think? She asked me. Here's a question I asked you. I don't think these people could exist on the outside, Alex, like certain people. What do you mean? Like would, would like I don't think Manson, they could never let him out, even though he never murdered anybody. Oh come on, he just got a, he just got cranky one day, okay? No, but do you think there's certain people that just can't exist outside the realms of? No, the I, I think I think Manson actually probably enjoyed being in prison for the rest of his life. He probably felt safe there. Uh, he, I think he felt that was the the society he could understand. He had spent most of his life in prison anyway before he got arrested for this, you know. And um, oh, look who's dancing. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> go, girl. Go. Go, girl. Go. <laughs> go, girl. Go. Huh? A little I entertainment here. Not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll get demonetized for that, you know. <laughs> but uh, what is it, a six year old girl now? How old is she? Seven. Boy. She, she gets more adorable by the day, Brian, but don't tell her that for me. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, any thoughts on this, uh, Brian, um, um, uh, Vernon? As I heard the judge sentence this guy, they said that he was to serve the rest of his natural life in prison. They didn't say life in prison without the possibility of parole. They said you, sh you are sentenced to the rest of your natural life in prison. Okay, so the, does that enable them to give him a parole? No, it's without parole. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, this guy, I would say, if you want my opinion, this guy won't be alive 10 years from now. You know? Probably not, but, but I, I can't help but feel sorry for the son who was left behind, you know? He's I, was, only... I was just about to mention that. You know, we never think about... Here, here's a, a brother who obviously is a victim of whatever <laughs> happened. And now he's victimized some more. You know? And you don't know what's going to happen to him either because of all these civil lawsuits that were going after the family's estate. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's certainly not responsible, but there's going to be no estate for him to inherit. That's exactly. for damn sure. You know. <clears throat> but uh, you know, he's got more. He's got redder hair than Prince Harry. Do you realize yeah, that? Yeah, like crack. Yeah. Yeah, it really. And he looked frail. I was watching the guy, the husband. He looks like he's like you could see he's way, the way his mannerisms. Well, of thought, course. Like I mean, he's, you know, I mean, uh, you know, he I, looks bad. Look, I don't know whether he did it or he didn't do it, and I don't <laughs> care. Okay, I don't think it's that important a story. Murder stories happen all the time, uh, and and what are you going to do about it? You know, I mean, uh, never did come up with a why. What? He never did come up with why. Why, he Why did, would he do it? Well, they said they they the prosecution claimed that he did it because he was trying to he he felt that the death of his wife and child at the hands of a murderer somewhere would get him off the hook with all the other stuff that was going on because it would make him sympathetic. That that was their their take on it. I don't know that I buy that as a motive. He, I think if there was a motive, the fact was he was all who, uh, uh, high on Oxycontin and whatever drugs yeah, he, he was all doing. Jumped up on joking. And I think if he did it, he did it in a fit of just going crazy, going nuts. You know, that's, that's always possible. In which case, you have a mitigating circumstance. You know, being all drugged up and doing something like that, you can claim he was not in, uh, in control of his senses at the time. But, you know, I, you know, it's, it's not, it, we're even discussing, and it's not that important to discuss. I think the only thing that's important to discuss about it is why the media just absolutely zoomed in on this thing. I mean, out of all the murder trials that are going on in the entire country, you know, there is this channel that did the best coverage of it. 
which is called like trial and something. Mm -hmm. Do you know the, yeah. what I'm talking about? And uh, they do this, you know, they're like the old court TV. They do this uh, all the time, do trials and so on and so forth. And um, uh, it's okay for them. Let them cover it, you know. Move on to other stuff. You know, I, I, I didn't hear about all the other news that's happening, not only here, but in the world. And, and I think it's that priority that, uh, that uh, these news operations have that is a bit amiss, okay? They should have a better sense of what's important. And they don't. But anyway, so. And now we're talking for about it for an hour. Huh? I, yeah. And well, now we're I, talking about it for an hour. <laughs> well, I, well, the larger question is, you know, I mean, this week the big story has been pretty much what uh, Rupert Murdoch uh, told in a deposition about Fox News. And it's pretty much put Fox News in a very bad position now uh, because what it's really done is that when, when you got Rupert Murdoch saying, yes, we lied, uh, he, you know, I don't know what he's thinking, to be honest with you, but I think his lawyers might have said, you got to say this because we want to take the heat off of you and, and you know, seem like we're transparent. What do you think, Josh? What do you think of Murdoch's statements? You think I haven't really uh, been able to hear what he said or read the articles. I keep seeing those headlines, but uh, I really haven't read those. So, well, I think it's re I think it's really important because the but, people who were the most were yelling fake news were fake news. Yeah, but I mean, as to why he said what he said, then I mean, I guess I can only assume that is. Uh, lawyers and his legal team advised him that if it was very likely the opposite side had proof, which they probably do, then, you know, you might as well not lie because you're just going to make things worse. So yeah. you might as well just answer the questions with the answer that, you know, they already have because mm -hmm. they have it and then take whatever you got coming and move on. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as to the overall, I'm not surprised if Fox News manipulated stories or whatever to, you know, push right. uh, claims of election fraud and things like that. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that they did. I'm not surprised that they admitted it. Um, I don't, really, I don't remember what started that lawsuit. I, I hardly pay attention to anything. Well, you know, it was Dominion. It was basically yeah. it was Dominion, and they were just oh, okay. It, so it's the it's the defamation or whatever. The defamation, yeah. That they okay. feel that yeah, yeah. Well, they were probably defamed. right. Yeah, I, I always shy away from stories about Murdoch and Fox News and all that. But I forgot this one was attached to something that was actually a uh, you know an important uh, you know a bit of actual news. I mean that is some seriousness that they did probably you know defame uh, a reputable company you know with no cause and now they have no proof um for their own reporting and on the opposite side the the plaintiff has proof that they knew they were lying when they said it so that's probably not good yeah well i mean uh, uh, it, it, you know he i mean he was very forthcoming they were asking him about the hosts mm -hmm. and whether they lied and they named some of the hosts, and he, he was going, uh, Janine Pirro, absolutely. Uh, Lou Dobbs, are you, yes, ab in, in, all the way. You know, he like completely threw Lou Dobbs under a bus. Uh, am, I, am I right or wrong, Vernon? Lou Dobbs is off of Fox, right? Yes. Yes. And he was thrown off as the, you know. Scapegoat. I don't watch scapegoat. Fox, but I think the reason we heard Rupert Murdoch testify the way he did is because he was under oath and he did not want to commit perjury. What are they going to do? Throw him in jail? He's 92 years old. Yeah, By the time the trial comes up, he'll be dead. You know? Do you think that if they put the other agencies under oath that they would admit the same thing? What do you mean other agencies? Uh, whether I, I use MSNBC. Well, you're, you're saying a, the uh, other networks. Yeah. Uh, well, they were, but they're not being sued by Dominion. So, I understand. so the question wouldn't even, the question wouldn't even be asked of them. No, I, I'm asking if they 
were under oath. But they would. Would, well, would they ha- say the same thing? They'd have to do something so egregious that they would have to testify. Well, you know, the the right thinks they did. What? Uh, what did the they do that was agreed? Hunter no, Biden's no, no, laptop. No, no. Uh, no, no. Hunter Biden's a whole laptop. Bunch of Wait a minute. Stuff. Hunter Biden's that's laptop. That's not a defamation. That's not a defamation lawsuit. Yeah, though. and hold on. Uh, 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 what's his name? Hunter Biden's laptop uh, was a Fox story. Right. You never you, saw it on MSNBC. But, you never saw it on CNN. You never other huh? other news or, or other reporting agencies said that it was a non-story and it wasn't true, and then it turns out to be true. No, it's not. So you, they don't and know maybe that they were in. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So, wait a minute. Okay. And they so could have affected the, wait a minute, you're the saying, election. You're saying it's true. No, where's the case? Where's the case? It doesn't matter where the case is. No, the, there has to be a case for them to go under oath. There has to be a case for them to go under oath. My question was, if they were under oath, would they say no, you, the you're truth about what was done? You're being hypothetical here. Yes, I am because they're not. There's no case. They're not being sued. But in my hypothetical question is: Well, they're not is, being sued because they didn't well, do anything bad my enough hy- to be sued. Hypothetical answer is yes. Yeah, that's called what aboutism. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it really it, is. What I'm saying is, I believe that I've been betrayed by all of those media outlets, and uh, and it's okay, the only well, one fine. that has actually admitted to it because they were under oath. Was Fox? Well, no, you, you weren't. You, you, no, no, you weren't. Uh, what was the term you used? You were betrayed. Uh, betrayed. No, you were. You were made to be gullible, misled. and eat and eat the, drink the Kool Aid. And then when the Kool Aid turned out to be poison, you feel <laughs> bad that you got poisoned. No, no I'm James angry James that that's what they did when I trusted <laughs> the information. <laughs> And I think that the information. Well, did you wait a minute? Did you not being... spout that information on this program? Of course. Yeah. Because well, I then, it. then, then, why are you I being believe, put on trial? I believe that it came from a trusted <laughs> source. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you and you guys they, believe so well, the trusted source. Therefore, they, therefore, they you. therefore, they misled you. Therefore, they misled you. They did, but I'm asking the hypothetical, if. These other news agencies were put on the stand but and asked the same question. Would say, they have the same answer? Hypothetically, yes, they would tell the truth. And oh, I have to take this call. <laughs> I say hypothetically, no. Just hey, to see it. Wait a minute. Who hypothetically, is who cares? Who, wait a minute. Wait. Hold, hold on a second. Who's more important than we are? No, not hypothetically. You I, are crazy for even bringing up the question. Yeah. Bill yeah, no, comes you, on Gabnet, and he hears the opposite of what he's hearing on Fox. And what does he believe? Fox. No, but the thing is that he says he's now upset with Fox because they led him astray. Well, you know, but he was gullible enough to agree with it. You and know, he dismissed and, anything and, he heard from Gabnet. He would come on this show and spout what he heard on Fox. So is that yeah. not secondary lying? You know, uh, but he doesn't take responsibility for it. But the idea of, uh, you know, to begin with, MSNBC hasn't been sued yet. And we Uh, don't know if they got sued. It might be for something else completely. There was no there was no misleading articles. They weren't out there saying go out and do the January 6th crap. They weren't out there saying that the Dominion machines were fake and you know, stealing information. They weren't doing all that. Fox was. That's the difference. Yeah, and they were they were saying it big time too. They were putting. Yeah, they, they were, were not they, they argue, down on any of it. The argument that also was given by Dominion is is that even after they knew that this was a lie mm-hmm. and realized it was a lie, they kept putting on people like Giuliani and uh, right. uh, and any number. Right. And who was the other one? Uh, that uh, that other uh, lawyer, uh, the female. Uh, oh, uh, Bart of Dar- Bartolome Sydney, Sydney or whatever Powell. Name No, who who did you say? Sidney Powell. Sidney Powell. Yeah. Yeah. And they say that in spite of the fact that they knew that those things weren't true, they put these people on to put forward those theories and pretty much agreed with them while they were on the air. How did yeah. they know they weren't true? Well, they knew because they were sending texts to each other saying it wasn't. Well, Trump is no, that was the newscasters for Fox. Yes, but uh, Trump said it was true, and Giuliani and Powell uh, supported Trump 
And you know they they were simply they were simply aiding the lie, Phil. They were parents. They had yeah, no but proof. I, I don't I don't know that you can prove that they knew for a fact that it was untrue, and they were oh uh, come continuing on to, come on Phil uh, come load on. on come why on why don't you go ask Mike Lindell too? Well, uh, you know, there's a benefit here for Mike Lindell because Fox New, Fox advertising is going to get so cheap. Yeah, it's going to be well, the my well, pillow wait a station. Hold on a second. Exactly. The reason they kept the, the one they kept putting on one of the ones they were putting on was Mike Lindell, who was saying it was the Dominion machines. In fact, he's being sued for a billion mm -hmm. or something like that. Uh, I, I, I've got the numbers. I've got the numbers. Yeah, I, I hope he's I've got, got enough, the numbers. I hope he got enough money stuffed in his pillows to pay off the, uh, the suit. <laughs> fucking but moron. That's why he has the My Pillow 2.0. 2.0 yeah. is a different company. He's yeah. got He'll bankrupt My Pillow uh, 2.1. Coming out with a Giza jockstrap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Tony. I said, yeah, I'll never forget. It's uh, my mother's birthday tomorrow, right? So when we were watching, you know, we used to watch when she was. What alive are you gonna do? Like, dig her up and have a birthday party? What is what is what? what you, did you see his father's well, grave site? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's putting put all sorts of trash and gluing it no, to his father's headstone. He's doing what? So listen to this. No, he's I gluing put, uh, trash to his father's no, headstone. Sorry, headstone. headstone. Listen to this, Alex. What I'll I mean, my mother's alive. We used Wait a minute. Hold on. Be nice to Tony. He's an orphan. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Listen to this. When my mother was alive, we would sit on the couch, and I'll never forget the day when she said we saw the that my pillow guy Phil and Alex. Right? So she goes, "What the fuck does he know about anything?" <laughs> like she, like, and my mother knows nothing about politics. She knew about ANS linens. I says, "Ma, I don't know what he." Do. Can I ask you a question, Alex? And even to Phil, why don't you, you ask me a question? Go ask ahead, ask, Alex, ask me, ask this? me a question. What does he have? And then on I'll June? Let, have Brian ask you a question. Yeah. Now, what what does he have? I have to admit this, Phil. He has to have something on Giuliani. Mm -hmm. Trump. He has. This to is have. the Magno headstone. Oh, okay. yeah. That's oh, that's my little Ernie Bird. And, I, my, when and I he glued kid. this shit. I to glued the him on. My father's probably cursing me out. Yeah, I never threw him out. What did you glue onto your father? Uh, Ernie, Mr. Potato they were Small. They took me to Sesame Street, so I saved the pieces when I was a kid and I put them on the tombstone for him. I think it's Mr. Potato Head. No, no, that's. Uh, I guess you. I guess you can. You can. Uh, yeah, they don't do that. They don't take them off. They keep it nice there. Oh, shut up! Oh, sorry. An orphan. <laughs> sorry. But Alex, what does he have on Trump? I mean, what does he have on Rudy? He's got to have something on him. Who? Uh, Trump. He's got to no, have something. Rudy's a Rudy's a maniac. Rudy's a maniac. He's lying so much. Tony, yeah, it's a conspiracy. He wants to the spotlight. He, he I wants don't know. Spotlight. I think there's something there, Alex. I think he owes him. No. You got to watch the documentary. That documentary was good. CNN documentary, did. yeah. The, the, the CNN was great, and they're doing one over there on MSNBC. And I don't know how they're going to improve on it. I think they have Giuliani's son on it or something. Oh, yeah. that fucking idiot! But I mean, the 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 CNN uh, documentary was incredible because what it really did watching. is it it pretty it pretty much I think the title was something like "What Happened to Rudy Giuliani?" I mean that he went from. Uh, this reputation that was positive <coughs> to this uh, completely negative, yeah, you know, he just completely became this nutcase. And what they show in this documentary is he was always this way. It's just he as he got older, he became more manic about it. But the way he handled things as mayor in New York City and so on was not <laughs> unlike the kind of uh, uh, way he's been acting lately. You know that it was just it was just kind of more subdued, yeah. Possibly, yeah. Anyway, so well, uh, yes. Let me see here. What else? What else happened this week? Nothing really happened this week. Well, Phil got COVID. Phil got COVID. <laughs> there you uh, go. Yeah. Well, I do. I do think the. I do think the student loan challenge will probably lose. Really. What do you mean? The challenge, yeah. the challenge will lose. The comments that I heard come out sounded like it was going to go go down. Yeah. What what was going to go down? The student loan program? Yeah, or? I think everybody. The, the, the executive loan. order to reduce loan amounts and things like yeah. So uh, what, gonna, everybody's going to pay for their their schooling. Yeah, I you know I don't think there was anything wrong with that. I think that any time. Well, well because you know it, it's an investment we're making in people who have mm -hmm. get, gotten an education 
And that education, for the most part, is going to go out and help the rest of the country. You yeah. know, it's going to help. It's the future of America. You want There's you nothing to... wrong with it. But the court isn't deciding whether or not there's anything wrong with it. Just whether the court he was... is being asked to decide well, whether well, or not the well, president of the United States has the power and authority to make that decision. Whether he Which is did, totally did, different. So the question yeah. would be, he would then have to actually go uh, through Congress, Congress, is what they're asking. Right. Yeah. yeah. And of course, that would... At the end of the day, I think that will be the decision. Um yeah, and it probably should. Be what are the, what are the limits on those those executive orders? I mean, it seemed like Trump was making them left and right and left and right, and you know, well, I mean, if as the as the person in charge of the executive branch, the president has the power to determine how the executive branch functions. Mm-hmm. But you can get into areas of that open for interpretation. For example. He's probably going to sign some other executive regulate uh, mm-hmm. orders in regards to student loans that direct the carriers who are government owned that used to be the Freddie May and Freddie May and Freddie Mac, where they call them something different now after they went bankrupt, mm-hmm. on how they should calculate what people pay. It, I won't go into it. It gets really complicated because it used to be 10% of your discretionary income which is how much you make over the poverty limit, blah, 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 this, that, after expenses and all the other. And he'd like to have it changed to five, which could cut people's payments in half. Mm -hmm. I think he probably has the power to do that because that's not eliminating any debt. That is simply redefining how Mm -hmm. they, as an agency, decide to collect the debt. He is the de facto head of that agency. So he probably has that power. There's a few other things they were going to do, like uh, certain ways that the interest is calculated, certain ways the due date. I mean, things like that. Mm -hmm. Administrative things, right? Mm -hmm. But that is a far cry different from saying you owe $50,000. No, you don't. I just said you owe $40,000. That is a different... You know, what What vested power does he have that would give him or any president that power? So I think that's where it gets different. It, it, the same thing is, it was. it's no different in many ways than the vaccine requirement, okay? I'm going to make everyone in America that is working have to get a vaccine requirement because of OSHA. Well, see, that's that's different. I mean, they said that he didn't have the power because I don't think that he does. He would have the power to say, OSHA, you are going to inspect these places at this interval. That's when I want you to go do your work. But that is far different from saying people must now meet this new requirement that I right. made up. Yeah. You know, if Congress had made that same exact requirement, that would be. A far different thing and then he would have the power to tell osha how they would enforce it but he can't make up what needs to be enforced you know uh so it's a very similar case uh in in my mind you right. know because it deals with executive power see i always remove the issue that's that's the problem with everybody is they'll start looking at the issue the issue isn't it doesn't matter Mm-hmm. The issue is the the detail of it, but that's beside the point. It really is. All they're really deciding is who has the power to make that decision: mm-hmm. the executive branch or the legislative branch. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and that's, well, is it, uh, that's is it the it fact that he, is it the fact that he is that they have or he has whoever has gone in and, and said that he wants to make that decision, and now they brought it to the mm-hmm. Supreme Court. Like he's asking for the world and see what he can get. Well, they might be. But and I don't, if he I don't, doesn't I don't get it, he can still do let, these. Let, other let me let me do this. Do let things. me let me ask Wayne. Uh, any comments? Because you've been very quiet tonight, so I want to give you a chance. Sometimes when you're new, you don't know you can just jump in whenever you want to. But you so unless you're me, yeah. <laughs> you no, mean? no, no. Uh, nothing out of what I've already heard already. So much agree with uh you know josh and uh kevin what do you think about uh about student loans do you think they should be forgiven 
Um, it'd be nice. At least, at least cut them in half or something like that. I mean, it, it, it is an advantage to us to have a well-educated public. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? And the only reason the Republicans are against it is because if we had a well-educated public, they'd never get elected. Thank yeah. you. I'll be here all night. <laughs> I got you. I'd say, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, how about you, Brian? Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on this, on student loans? I'm, did you ever have to take out a student loan when you were a kid? No, but but... I mean, it sounds all nice, but then how do you be fair about it? Right. Well, that's, what do you that's mean? If you, say, if you say right now everything is forgiven, then what about people who've just paid stuff off the last year, last two years? Yep. Um, well, you last. know, I mean, uh, it's because they weren't, well, to begin with, they had a cheaper student loan than some of these other people because they got them a long time ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's for starters. I mean, how, how much did it co when I was going to uh, thinking about going to college, you know what it cost, I think, to get into like UC Berkeley was like $50 a, a year, $100 uh -huh. a year. Now it's, well, now it's at, what, at, you know? Look at my situation here. I'm about ready to put a kid through college, right. like in the next few months. Right. It won't, occur, it won't, it won't have anything to do with me. Is she getting any any uh, uh, student loans? I mean, is she getting any help with her with her? Well, tuition? she's got offered a few scholarships, mm -hmm. but you know, those are just to be taken if she goes to a certain school, and we haven't even decided that yet. Right, right. What's, and we've yeah. applied for a lot of stuff, but that none of that's been decided yet. So I don't even know what I'm up against yet. Yeah. And I imagine I may have to take a loan or two out. Who knows? Yeah. But these these loans are are operated and guaranteed by the government, you know, so it's a government entity, for example. So you technically owe the government, right? Right. So if you go file your federal taxes this year, and and when it's all said and done, they say you owe twelve hundred dollars, right? Does Joe Biden then have the power to say no? Josh Wheeler owes six hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean, even though you all think that would be great, do you think that he has the power to say that? By the way, Brian, are you saving up for uh, no. your kids' education? Hmm. No, I told them they're uh, got to get a scholarship or they're asked out. You're out of here. Do you think the cost? Do you think the cost Do you think the cost of education is too high? And it, that it, it, uh, in the past, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and what are they spending it on? Or get uh, a new they... McLaren? I get it. Hey, no, but that's, it, why, that's why Tiffany you know, doesn't want to get married because then they can the kids can file for financial help. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Well, that's a good thinking. Yeah, they, everybody rich. You know, it's I don't know where they're spending this money. They're spending it on administration. They're spending it on uh, high salaries for. Uh, uh, football teams and things like that, mm -hmm. although a lot of football teams are self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it just, it shouldn't cost what it's costing uh, to, to go to school. And some of these kids that took loans mm -hmm. didn't bother taking courses of study that would allow them to pay them back. They took yeah. things like uh, radio and television. And now they're looking for a job and they can't pay the loan back and they're having to work as a barista at starbucks yeah. so anyway listen we got it's that, getting their decision it's getting time to go in case anybody wonders i still haven't heard from my doctor <laughs> well, <laughs> oh by you know why because biden's got cancer yeah biden's got cancer they got to take care of that now <laughs> yeah he he's getting all the country's attention yeah None for hey you. thank you uh thank you josh i appreciate it always do uh and thank you to uh, Alan, you're wonderful. To Zoom Bomber, better known as Wayne. Got to thank you for being here tonight. By the way, nobody Zoom bombed us tonight. Nobody even tried. Oh, don't, don't bring that up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I need the numbers. Uh, <laughs> Bill did. Bill did. He up. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kevin. I appreciate it. 
And uh, thank you, uh, Phil. I hope you get better, you know. Thanks. I'm sure I will, but I brought the virus with me. just. Y- yes, well, I, I was coughing during the show. I think maybe I caught it from you. Yeah, I'm uh, sure you did. Let's uh, <laughs> let's uh, thank uh, Tony, and let's thank Vernon. Always wonderful Vernon. to have you here. And Brian, you're such a good pal, and you've like done, you're always here, and we appreciate that, too. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? And that's it for tonight, okay? There they go. In fact, that's ton- that's it for this week, as a matter of fact. Uh, we're off until Monday when we do the big uh, show on Facebook, which is a uh, thing we call the pop-up show. And then we'll be back again next Wednesday. In the meantime, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. He'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you next uh, Wednesday. Well, the next one of these shows, The Ramble, will be on next Wednesday at 10.30. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Have a nice weekend, everybody.